So, you want to turn your boring clip into something like this? Well, look no further than... Oh, yeah, that doesn't look right. Well, I think it's about time I do an updated compositing tutorial, because, well, to be honest, my last one wasn't very good. So, let's just get started. The first thing you'll need, just your clip with the V-load on, like here. Then, just right click it, add new compound clip, and create. Okay, so then just open your clip in the Fusion page. Let's just get started with the most simple one, which is adding glow to these ones. Add in a Luma gear, like this, and connect your clip to it. Then just bring the low up, like here, all the way until you only have barely this left. Then I personally like to use this plugin called Dream Glow. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But you can also use X Glow, it works just fine. And now in here, just mess with these things a bit, maybe bring the glow strength down a bit and change it to glow only. Now we can merge it back into the clip. Then another thing, in order to add those glow elements and make them look good, you need to make the clip darker first. So add in a color corrector, like here, and bring down the saturation and the gamma and gain. Uh, this is way too dark for now, but it'll get better as we add the effects. Next thing we'll add is glow to these hands. So in order to do that, again, take your clip here, and you just want to key out these hands. For this, maybe chroma gear could work. And with this, you can just make these boxes here kind of go over the color. And yeah, I think that is pretty good. And now you can see it also keyed out something from this wall. So to fix that, add in a polygon node and hold Alt and bring it to the garbage mat here. Now just make a kind of rough key around these hands. Like that. And in the chroma gear, uh, click invert mat. Like that. You can also check that it's the key is good the whole time, which is not. So, just go back in here. And yeah, that, that looks pretty fine. And again, with this, we can just add in the Dream Glow here. And yeah, it's already looking a lot better. We can maybe start adding some particles. So, to do that, again, take your clip here, add in a camera tracker. And now, this is a studio-only feature as will be most of the stuff I show in this video. All these things have some sort of workarounds, and I'll leave some tutorials on how to use them in the description. But if you are not on studio version, uh, this maybe isn't the best tutorial for you. Okay, so in the camera tracker, add in a polygon node, and key out any hard elements or any moving elements. And now, once you've masked out the teams, Go into the camera tracker, hit preview auto track locations, then bring down the detection threshold to like 1.2 maybe, pretty low, and the minimum feature separation low, like here is okay, like 0.01. Then click by directional tracking and hit auto track. Now go into the solve tab and just hit solve. Okay, so after a while you'll get to a track, and if the track is bad, you can try deleting the bad points and resolving it and just trying to get this average solver to anything below one. And now point three, that's really good. We can go into the export temp and just hit export, like that. Now we can remove these, bring this back here somewhere, uh, delete the ground plane, and this is where we can start adding all the good elements. And I think the first one I'm gonna show is just some particles with motion blur, bit, pretty basic, but they look good and I use them almost everywhere. So, to do that, first of all, uh, connect your clip into the camera to see what you're working with. Then, add in a particle emitter and a particle render. Connect this here, then the particle emitter, change the region to cube and just bring up the scale a bunch. Yeah, that, that's pretty good for that. So now, go on to the first frame, and maybe keyframe this at like a 120 or something. 
and second frame at zero. Then in the bar, uh, style tab, change it to and gone and click the sphere here. Now you have some particles here. You can see them a bit better if you turn off the point cloud. Now let's add some movement. So velocity, maybe like three and add in this a bunch. And just mess around the, with these settings until you get something you like on the movement and also with the angle and stuff. So now, once you have something you like with the mu movement, you can add in a particle turbulence here and bring down the density to make maybe one and just up the X and Y strength. This adds a bit more randomness to it. And yeah, that looks that looks pretty nice. So now we can go into the P renderer and in here enable the mo motion blur. Then also in the camera tracker enable motion blur. But first disconnect your clip from this. So like that. You can see this kind of nice motion blur. And just to mess with this, keep the particle renderer and camera tracker settings the same. But yeah, just mess with this a bit maybe. Bring down. And yeah, that looks that looks pretty nice. So maybe add a slight glow and connect it here with blend down. That already looks pretty nice, I think. Yeah. So now for the bit more advanced particle effects. This next one I've been using recently a lot. Uh, it's basically just these random letters flying around. Uh, it's super simple to make. Don't think it will look good in this scene, but I just want to show it here. So, add in a text node. Then in here, type any letter. Go into text, scramble, modifiers. And then in here, remove all the not capital letters. Like this. And randomness to one. So this keeps changing all the time. You can also bring down the global in and out to maybe like minus 10. Okay, so next, add in a particle emitter, same way we did there, and you can do all kinds of settings with this to make it look good in your scene. Maybe we'll just keep the number at 2, and add a bit of velocity. Then, in the style tab, change the style from point to bitmap, like this, and connect the text. Then, the animate, change this from particle bird time. Like this. Okay. Now if we bring down the size, you can see it's just all kinds of random letters. Uh, maybe we bring down the number a bit. And yeah, that's how I make that effect. Another good one is images in the particles or like videos. So to do that, we can grab our same particle emitter setup here. Copy and paste it. Uh, make sure you turn off motion blur here. Okay. Now... We could first of all change the this back to a sphere. Uh, I think it will look better for this clip. Like this and size up a bit. Then bring down the number. 15 is good. Yeah, that looks that looks nice on the movement, I think. Maybe a bit slower. So then what we can do is add in a replicate 3D, like here. So just add in an image plane 3D here and then bring in your video you want to use so now if we here bring up the scale you can start seeing the butterflies but one thing you'll notice is they're all animating at the same time and that doesn't look good so first of all in the clip start at like minus 50 uh, uh, like that so we also have frames before this, okay. Make sure the image plane doesn't break it. So yeah, okay. So now in the replicate 3D, we can go into kind of time offset. And just bring this up. And just with that, you can see they're animating at the different times. I think that looks pretty nice. We'll change the particle settings a bit. Now we can copy this one just without the motion blur, this setup here, and bring it, bring it into our comp. Comp. Now 
I do have a bit more particle effects, but I don't think they look as good, so I'm not gonna show them here. But maybe, maybe in the future if I can get them to look better. Okay, so now we have some particle effects, we have these butterflies, we have these flying things. We could also add in some fog, like just, I've already done a, like a proper tutorial on how to do that, so I'm not gonna show that again. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. But I can show like this different kind of one, a lot simpler. And it it looks nice, I think. Kind of this fog moving towards you. So for that, uh, take your, your camera, merge 3D and camera tracker. D bring these to wherever you want them. Maybe here for now. Connect your clip and your point cloud. And now what we can do is add in noise. For this I'm gonna use this turbulent noise by I think I think it's called Learn Now Effects. I'll leave a link to this in the description. And it's just this nice looking noise. Bring down the size here. Like this. That okay. Maybe C trade up. And then just keyframe the size from point 2 to like point 7. Like that. Okay, so now in here just Click any of these points, uh, right click point cloud 3D and create image plane. Now that will throw it somewhere in the computer, just have to find it and reconnect it here. Now in the size tab, lock XYZ, maybe move this forward a little bit, pretty close to the camera so you can see a lot of the movement. And now just connect your turbulent noise to this. And yeah, that gives you this kind of thing. So after the camera tracker, just add in a lens distortion. Again, this is a studio only feature, which is why I just bring up the distortion here. Add in a color corrector maybe. Bring this to a little bluish color. And again, just connect it to your comp. There. Now with this, you need to bring down the blend down a bunch, like point 0.1. Now that that looks okay, I think. Now, another thing we can do is just add in a little depth fog. So, grab your clip, copy it over here, add in a depth map, and this change to faster mode. We can just add in a saver node, and render it out to wherever we need it. Okay, so use it as a mask on a background node, like this, change to luminance, and invert. Now with this you can kind of mess with the color a little bit and just bring it to your comp. Like that. Now this is looking pretty dark but we can color grade it, it will look nice. Now this is like the main main comp. It doesn't look the best right now. It looks good but not the best. So now we'll add some final effects. So in a separate adjustment clip you can add in this heat distortion. Uh, I think this is also a Learn No FX plugin. It's super simple with these settings here. Also, some defocus gamma. Just a rough mask around your whatever you want to add the defocus onto. There. Soft edge just a little bit. Now we can just color create this, so, so again, add in another color, uh, add in another one of these adjustment clips, and over here in the color tab, just try to make a nice little col color create to it. Nothing, nothing crazy. Don't be afraid to make this a pretty strong color. Uh, we could maybe add some re lens reflections here and yeah I I think that looks overall I think it looks nice so now since I kind of showed this before making any basics I'm just gonna do the basics really quick and then I'll show you the finished product so I'll be back in a bit and yeah I think we're pretty much done with this if I show this here 
I think that looks that looks pretty nice in my opinion. So yeah. I hope you learned something and if this was helpful please leave a like and subscribe. Yeah, thanks for watching.